Before any maneuver, check if it can be performed safely, then signal your intention and recheck your mirror and blind spot. According to the road signs and situation, decide whether passing is allowed and safe. After you've signaled your intention to pass, make another check in your rear view mirrors and the blind spot. Aim far ahead and gradually change lanes. Remember to speed up gradually while changing lanes lest traffic ahead prevent you from doing so. When the vehicle that you passed is completely visible in your inside rear view mirror, check the blind spot on the right, return to the right lane without slowing down. Never pass on the right except to pass a vehicle that's about to make a left turn. Change lanes completely to pass a motorcycle or a moped. When passing a cyclist, make sure you leave sufficient space between him and your vehicle. Finally, when a vehicle passes you, stay well over to the right and leave the initiative to the driver who passes you. Be ready to collaborate if necessary. Right-of-way rules determine who yields the right-of-way to others. Still, it's better to avoid a collision than to die for a right-of-way. Yield the right-of-way to pedestrians crossing a public roadway. When entering or exiting private property, yield to pedestrians and vehicles traveling on a public roadway. The vehicle that arrives first at the intersection or is already in the intersection should be given the right-of-way. When many vehicles reach the intersection at the same time, yield the right-of-way to the vehicle on the right. When making a left turn, yield the right-of-way to any oncoming vehicles. When a school bus turns on its flashing lights or extends its stop arm, stop your vehicle. And do the same when a train nears a level crossing. Finally, yield the right of way to emergency vehicles when their siren or flashing lights are in operation. In principle, make the turn as short as possible. Before turning, be sure the traffic signs authorize turns. Activate the appropriate turn signal and slow down significantly. With a manual transmission vehicle, downshift into second gear. Before turning, check the rear view mirror and the blind spot. To turn right, turn into the nearest authorized lane of the other roadway. Maintain a reduced speed while turning and aim far ahead. From the middle of the turn, gradually accelerate. To turn left, move into the lane nearest the center line if you're on a two-way road. Remember to keep the wheels straight while letting oncoming vehicles pass. While turning, enter the lane nearest to the center line on a two-way road or the far left lane on a one-way road. If you're driving on a one-way road, move into the far left lane. While turning, drive into the lane on the right side of the center line on a two-way road or the far left lane of the road if you're on a one-way road. Maintain a safety cushion around your vehicle. This space must be sufficient to allow you to brake or drive around an obstacle. For a minimum safe following distance, you should keep at least a two-second interval from the vehicle ahead. To calculate this distance, choose a fixed reference point in front of the vehicle ahead, and as soon as the rear of the vehicle passes it, count 1001, 1002.
If you have finished counting before the front of your vehicle reaches the reference point, you are maintaining the minimum two second following distance. Be ready to increase your following distance to three, four, or even six seconds, depending on your speed, the condition of the road surface, weather conditions, traffic density, and your driving experience in the existing conditions. When you are being tailgated, gradually slow down in order to create a larger space cushion ahead. While passing parked vehicles on your right, keep well over on the left in your lane in order to keep a side space of at least three feet or one meter. When you stop behind a vehicle, make sure you can see the rear tires touching the road. Carry out the necessary checks and adjustments before driving a vehicle. Ensure first that there's no child, animal, or object in the blind zone around your vehicle. Look under the vehicle and check the tires, windows, rear view mirrors, and headlights. Once inside the vehicle, insert the key in the ignition switch, then lock all the doors. Firmly secure loose objects and ensure that no obstacle reduces visibility, hinders your ability to move, or the movement of the vehicle controls. Adjust the seat, headrest, and rearview mirrors. Adjust the vents and buckle up. You're now ready to start the engine. Always check the blind spot before changing direction. And avoid driving in other people's blind spots. When driving on the access ramp of an expressway, find a gap in the first lane that you might be able to enter. On the acceleration lane, after the usual verifications, signal your intention and adjust your speed to the flow of traffic. Recheck the rear view mirror and blind spot, then merge into the gap in traffic. On the expressway, drive in the right or center lane. Scan the highway at least 20 seconds ahead. In ideal conditions, maintain a following distance of 3 seconds both ahead of and behind you. Avoid driving in a convoy and adjust your speed and the space around you to the traffic conditions. Always change lanes one at a time and check the blind spot across the width of the roadway. If you don't see your exit in time, uh -oh. continue to the next exit. To exit the expressway, move into the lane nearest the exit, signal your intention and check traffic in the rear view mirrors and blind spot. In the deceleration lane, reduce speed before reaching the exit ramp. While parking, proceed at walking speed and throughout the maneuver, check the traffic, your vehicle, the parked vehicles and pedestrians. When backing, look to the rear at your intended path of travel. Along a curb, park as close to the edge as you can without touching it. On slopes, turn your wheels so that your vehicle cannot enter traffic should it move without a driver. To angle park, turn the steering wheel while aiming at the end of the parking space where you will center the vehicle. To leave a parking space, turn a quarter turn to the right and then reverse slowly. Once your front bumper clears the back bumper of the vehicle on your left, turn sharply to complete the maneuver. For parallel parking, move alongside the vehicle parked after the space. Stop once the back bumpers are in line. 
Back up while turning the steering wheel until your vehicle is at a 45 degree angle with the sidewalk. Straighten the wheels to maintain this angle. Once your front bumper lines up with the back bumper of the vehicle ahead of you, turn the steering wheel sharply in the opposite direction. To leave a parallel parking space, look out the rear window, back up and prior to stopping, turn the steering wheel, ready to exit. When the road is clear, pull into traffic and gradually straighten the wheels. To drive forward into a perpendicular space, turn sharply and drive slowly, aiming toward a distant spot centered in the space. To back into a perpendicular parking spot, stop beyond the space with the back bumper of your vehicle lined up with the middle of the parked vehicle. Back up while turning the steering wheel in the direction of the parking spot and center your vehicle. If you see sand, gravel, dead leaves, potholes or water on the road, slow down prior to reaching the dangerous zone. Maneuver gently and return to normal speed once you're past the hazard. If the brakes are wet, dry them until they function properly. Approaching an unpaved road, slow down, maintain a reduced speed and increase your following distance. When encountering water on the road, slow down and drive in the tracks of the vehicle ahead. If you hydroplane, shift to neutral, turn on the hazard lights and grip the steering wheel firmly without braking or accelerating until you feel the tires are in contact with the road. Brake gently and drive more slowly. To avoid being blown off course, gently steer the vehicle in the desired direction as soon as it deviates. At night, drive more slowly and lengthen your following distance. In case of glare from vehicles behind you, temporarily adjust the rear view mirror to the night position. When blinded by oncoming vehicles, flash the high beams, slow down if possible, and look far ahead toward the right side of the road. Always use low beams when following a vehicle or meeting an oncoming vehicle. In fog, slow down, increase your following distance and turn on your hazard lights. If the situation gets worse, stop in a safe place as far as possible from the road until conditions improve. Eyes gather up to 90% of the information necessary for driving. Therein lies the importance of developing good visual habits and to have an eye test regularly or as soon as your sight becomes hazy. The field of vision is divided into two parts, central and peripheral vision. At high speed, the field of vision diminishes and visual acuity is reduced. Monocular vision and color blindness can affect your driving. The SIPDE strategy was developed for safe driving. Constantly scan the road and its surroundings, close to you and far ahead. Also glance at the rearview mirror and dashboard regularly. Identify the pertinent information, such as objects in motion, road signs, or hazards. When facing danger, anticipate what you should do according to two scenarios, the most likely to happen and the worst case. Decide what maneuvers will minimize the risk. Then, without hesitating, execute the maneuver. If the worst case scenario develops, execute the decision that corresponds to that scenario. Here is a brief summary of the elements we've covered today. First of all, there is the SIPDE method. Scan, identify, predict, decide, execute. The SIPDE method will, at all times, help you properly manage the six space areas that surround your vehicle. Front left, front, front right, rear left, rear, rear right. 
Before moving into a space area, three conditions must be met. First of all, you must be able to properly see this space area. Secondly, you must make sure there's no other vehicle occupying this space area. Thirdly, check to see if another driver is about to enter the space area. There are also the danger zones. Under certain conditions, you must increase your following distance from vehicles ahead in order to reduce the risk and to drive safely. These conditions are speed, visibility, road conditions, mechanical condition of the vehicle, including the condition of the tires. To keep the danger zones open, you must maintain a safe following distance from the vehicle ahead and from the vehicle behind you, make sure this space is a minimum of two seconds, ideally keep the space areas around your vehicle open. In heavy traffic, to maximize your field of vision and create space to maneuver, make sure to keep your front, front left, and front right space areas open by changing lane position or completely changing lanes. In a lane, you can occupy three different positions. The central position, the one in the middle of the lane, the lane right position when your vehicle is in the right portion of the lane, the lane left position in the left portion of the lane. Here is a brief summary of the elements we've covered today. First of all, there is the SIPDE method. Scan, identify, predict, decide, execute. The SIPDE method will at all times help you properly manage the six space areas that surround your vehicle. Front left, front, front right, rear left, rear, rear right. Before moving into a space area, three conditions must be met. First of all, you must be able to properly see this space area. Secondly, you must make sure there's no other vehicle occupying this space area. Thirdly, check to see if another driver is about to enter the space area. There are also the danger zones. Under certain conditions, you must increase your following distance from vehicles ahead in order to reduce the risk and to drive safely. These conditions are speed, visibility, road conditions, mechanical condition of the vehicle, including the condition of the tires. To keep the danger zones open, you must maintain a safe following distance from the vehicle ahead and from the vehicle behind you, make sure this space is a minimum of two seconds, ideally keep the space areas around your vehicle open. In heavy traffic, to maximize your field of vision and create space to maneuver, make sure to keep your front, front left, and front right space areas open by changing lane position or completely changing lanes. In a lane, you can occupy three different positions. The central position, the one in the middle of the lane, the lane right position when your vehicle is in the right portion of the lane, the lane left position in the left portion of the lane. Either a vehicle breakdown or a driving error will force you to face a critical situation at least once in your life. One principle should therefore guide you. Don't panic. Regularly check your tire pressure. If a tire is used, bulging or cracked, replace it. When changing a tire, activate the four-way flashers and warn other road users by using reflective signs placed at least 100 feet in both directions. 
Before boosting your battery using another vehicle, make sure that the two vehicles aren't touching, that the two batteries are of equal voltage, that your battery isn't frozen rather than dead, and that the fluid levels in your battery aren't too low. If your hood flies open, slow down, maintain your position by looking under the hood or by sticking your head out the side window and steer toward the side of the road. If your engine stops suddenly, shift to neutral, activate the four-way flashers and apply the brakes continuously until your vehicle comes to a stop. When your engine is overheating, increase your following distance, turn your heater on to hot and the fan to high, shift to neutral and rev the engine slightly to release the heat. In case of brake failure, activate the four-way flashers, downshift to use engine compression and pump the brake to re-establish pressure. If the gas pedal is jammed, push the brake pedal to the floor, maintain pressure until the vehicle comes to a stop, shift to neutral, turn the key to off, and activate the four-way flashers. For whatever reason, your vehicle leaves the road. Slow down without braking, grip the wheel firmly, stabilize your vehicle, then steer safely back onto the road in the center of the lane. When your vehicle goes into a skid, release the brake, steer where you want to go, and when under control, apply the brake more lightly. Cellular phones increase the phenomenon of divided attention. If you decide to use one, the ideal situation is to stop by the side of the road. Never pass when approaching or crossing an intersection or when you're in an intersection. Enter only if you're sure you can cross and exit safely. Never change lanes in an intersection and always obey the traffic signals. First step, you're several car lengths from the intersection. First, identify the intersection and any traffic control devices. Scan it with your eyes. Also, check the traffic behind you. Second step, your two or three car lengths from the intersection. Scan it again with your eyes and scan the crossroad. Identify the dangers. Check the traffic behind you again. Third step, at the intersection, scan the crossroad and the intersection again. Decide whether it is safe to enter. When coming to an uncontrolled intersection, carry out the three steps while slowing down, covering the brake pedal, and centering yourself in the lane. When coming to an intersection with stop signs, check whether the crossroad has any. Reduce your speed and come to a smooth stop. When coming to an intersection with traffic lights, identify whether the light is green, amber, or red. If it's been green for some time, get ready to stop. When you stop at a red light, maintain a distance of about half a car length from the vehicle ahead. When the light turns green, scan from left to right before entering the intersection. If you're behind another vehicle, count to three after it starts moving before you do the same. Never pass when coming to a grade crossing. Never cross if a mechanical crossing signal indicates a train is coming. Roll down the window and listen while reducing your speed, covering the brake pedal and centering yourself in your lane. If a train is approaching, stop at a distance of at least 20 feet. After the train goes by, check again to the left and right to see whether another train might be coming. At traffic circles, vehicles already in them have priority over those entering. Vehicles near the center have priority over those further away. Decide where you want to go. If you want to turn right onto the crossroad, stay in the right-hand lane. 
If you want to proceed straight, enter the outside lane and prepare to exit. If you want to turn left onto the crossroad or make a U-turn, enter the inside lane and stay there until you've gone halfway round. Then change lanes to the right and prepare to exit. There are all sorts of reasons why drivers get angry and they express their anger through many types of aggressive behavior. If you have a history of being tense behind the wheel, take a course in anger management. Meanwhile, as a means of reducing tension on the road, plan your time so as to avoid racing against the clock and change your schedule to avoid driving at rush hour. Don't tailgate. Instead, maintain a reasonable distance between yourself and the other vehicle. When passing, don't get too close to the vehicle in front of you. To properly complete your passing maneuver, make sure that you can see the entire front end of the other vehicle in your rear view mirror before pulling in. When you have to merge onto a freeway, leave enough room between your vehicle and other motorists. Forgetting to communicate with your turn signals remains the most common source of irritation. Be very careful. When driving with your high beam headlights, remember to dim your low beams to avoid blinding oncoming motorists. Do not overuse your horn. Two short taps are better than one long blast. Never sound your horn to attract people's attention for reasons other than road safety. When parking, don't encroach on other spaces and never use areas reserved for the handicapped. Don't let yourself be distracted by the telephone when you're behind the wheel. Park your car in a safe place or use the hands-free option. Avoid displaying bumper stickers, flags, or slogans which might offend other motorists. The best way to respond to road rage is simply to ignore it. Don't react to provocation. If another vehicle is stalking you, go to a police station or any other place where you might find help. When you cross paths with an aggressive driver, make a note of the license number and report the incident to the proper authorities. Road signs and signals are used in the highway transportation system to facilitate and regulate the flow of traffic. All road users should be perfectly fluent in this language, which uses forms, colors, and symbols to make its terms more easily understood. Regulatory signs tell the road users what they can and cannot do in this specific area of the highway transportation system. Speed limit signs indicate the absolute speed limit for ideal driving conditions. Traffic direction signs in all cases designate the direction of the flow of traffic. An obligatory maneuver sign requires all drivers to proceed in the direction indicated or choice of posted directions. Prohibited maneuver signs indicate, depending on the direction of the black arrow appearing on them, that continuing straight ahead, turning left or right, or making a U-turn is strictly prohibited. A crossing sign indicates that at this specific spot, a road user may cross the road. An advanced regulatory sign is designed to warn drivers of the corresponding regulatory sign ahead. Loss of lane signs announce the closing of one or several lanes on a multi-lane thoroughfare. Merging lane or merging lane reserved for buses signs inform you of the possibility that vehicles may join the flow of traffic by merging from an entrance ramp. When motorists see hill signs, they should check their brakes and prepare to downshift in order to make use of the engine compression on the downgrade. An icy roadway signal warns you that a road, bridge, or viaduct may be covered with ice or frost when the temperature drops close to the freezing point. A sign with the word fog and flashing yellow lights warns drivers of the presence of mist ahead. A pavement end signs warns of a change in the road surface ahead. You're advised to slow down before the change occurs to reduce any danger due to the lower traction. A slippery when wet sign warns you of reduced traction when the roadway is wet. In such cases, you're advised to slow down. 
construction or temporary signs warn of imminent danger and, in certain cases, regulatory signs ahead. Conditions in the worksite signs inform drivers about the type of work being carried out in the vicinity, the obstacles to expect, and changes in the number or position of lanes. Pavement markings painted on the roadway provide motorists with ongoing directions which are easy to follow. These directions supplement the information provided by road signs and occasionally warn of possible danger ahead. Traffic lights constitute very useful instruments for controlling vehicle and pedestrian traffic. Overhead lane use signals control the use of lanes on bridges, in tunnels and in places where the traffic may change directions. If your vehicle is not equipped with turn signals or if they're defective, you must use your arm to communicate your intentions. Before cooperating with the other road users, you must master the techniques for controlling your vehicle for each situation that may present itself, all the while maintaining vehicle balance. To turn or to exit a parking space, use the hand-over-hand -hand technique. In avoidance or emergency maneuvers, keep your hands in the basic position with your thumbs well anchored to the wheel and steer sharply. When backing straight or into a right turn, divide the maneuver into three steps. Assess, prepare, execute. To back into a left turn, proceed in the same fashion as before except in the preparation. In order to stop your vehicle safely, you must know all the braking techniques. It's impossible to stop a vehicle immediately. There's a certain amount of time between the moment you see an obstacle on the road and when your vehicle comes to a complete stop. This period can be divided into four parts. Perception, decision, reaction, braking. The ABS or anti-lock braking system allows the driver to make an emergency stop while still being able to steer. Acceleration should be done gradually. Afterwards, you must be able to maintain your cruising speed effortlessly. Don't forget that when the road slopes up or down, you must adjust the pressure on the gas pedal accordingly. When a vehicle is moving, its center of gravity is influenced by external physical forces like the shape of the road. Acceleration transfers the weight towards the rear. Braking transfers the weight toward the front. Turning the wheel transfers the weight to the opposite side of the vehicle. Sharing the road in a safe and effective manner requires cooperation from all road users. It's therefore absolutely necessary to communicate your intentions using your headlights, turn signals, four-way flashers, horn, and hand signals.